My beautiful people, let's get into some franchise here, shall we? Shall we? Because we made the ploffs this year for the first time since trading Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. We lost to Buffalo in five games in round two. Fumble. Imagine losing Fumble. in five Fumble. games in the second round. Uh, my God, there's a couple. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Philardu. Let me know if I'm wrong. Thank you for the follow. For those about to score, I salute you. <sighs> Ender, are you? Ender, you might be dumb. Kinda. Thank you for the 19 months on the prize. <laughs> we know we will not have a lottery pick this year. Shout out to Justin for the uh, for the lovely bits as well. The Vancouver Canucks have won a draft lottery. Can you believe it? I can. Do I still have that clip? I don't think I do. Is it over here? I don't think I have that clip anymore. That's a shame. I thought I still had that. I have. I have this one. But I don't have the. Can you believe it? I can. Fucking Pierre Maguire, the worst. Retired players retire. Joe Pavelski. Nick Backstrom, Jeff Carter, Zach Parise and company, David Perron, ah, James Van Riemsdyk is gone. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Defensively. Yeah, Snipe, we said the same thing last night. How about Brent Burns of Vancouver? Damn, a lot of guys who played a thousand games. TJ Brody included. Zach Bogosian. Nikita Zaitsev. Mark Andre Fleury retires over 600 career wins. Outrageous. Again, something I've asked for. Hopefully, we get it again soon. We need a Hall of Fame. We need a Hall of Fame at the end of each season. Very similar to MLB. I'm actually gonna write that down. Remind, actually, I might. I might just. I might just. I might just type it now. I might just type it now. I might just do it. Give me a second. Beautiful. Uh, do you still have the goalie fight screen? I don't think so. What do you think about uh, Brady's and talk with the Raiders and the Bayern? I don't care. <laughs> I emotionally detached myself from Tom Brady the second he became a Florida man. So I have no thoughts at all. <laughs> no thoughts at all. The draft in 2026. Detroit looking to trade that number two pick. Who is available? Oh, there's a franchise player. Gavin McKenna's a high elite. Fuck. Oh, Vancouver is going to get a franchise level player. There's no way I could pull off a trade for this with them not wanting to give up the pick. It's just not going to happen. That's a shame. We were one year off, essentially, of a franchise caliber pick. I do wonder about Detroit, though. They're the only team outside or uh, really inside the top 10, from the looks of it, that might want to trade this pick. We did get rid of a lot of draft picks and a lot of secondary prospects to push for it at the deadline. Only got to the second round. Kyle Dubas simulator. That 20th overall pick, I mean, if we could move up, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? Especially, I have these low elites who just did not develop. I have these guys. Like, Korolev didn't improve at all. Left wing side, Little did not improve at all. Lume and Sunkfist, these guys did improve a decent a decent amount. Maybe I wouldn't want to get rid of the low elites then, given that some of them improved. Maybe take the risk with the other ones. But like Dalibor, Dvorsky, you have more. We don't really have room for these guys. We already have our top three centers. Perot as well. It was pretty damn good. I do have prospects that I could send... To Detroit to try and pull off this trade for the second overall pick. I think we could do it. We'd be emptying the cupboard a little bit. 
to do it, but why not? Man, Kieskinen's going to be an NHLer this year, too. Or is he? Ooh. We might have to make a decision for uh, third, fourth line left wing because Ronnie Heaven and I don't want to get rid of him. We're going to have some decisions to make. We do have some defenders that could go to Tara Kieskinen. <laughs> so these three picks here, Vancouver's about to select that franchise player first overall. And if they don't, uh, that means we might be laughing our way to the bank here. Those three picks, are those three prospects for the second overall pick in Silverberg? No. I can add a little bit more. What about the 45th pick? Shit, I accidentally removed that prospect. All right, we're not going to have much time to pull this off, but we are going to try with the trio of centers. Quite far off. Okay. Let's get word from Vancouver. Do they have a franchise-level player? Yes, they do, as they take Hornquist, medium franchise... He's a shooter, and yeah. Detroit, I want that pick. I want that pick, but can we come to terms on a trade? We'll get rid of the extra options there. We got Landon on the left. Lamaru, Kuhlman's on the right. Riley Sokoloff, Landon. Havlid's on the right. Sandy and Pelica's on the right. Dickinson, too. Dickinson wouldn't be that bad. <sighs> I don't know if we're going to pull this off. I don't know if we are. Again, it is Gavin McKenna, though, and he is a winger. We're already pretty stocked up at left wing as well. Does have tape to tape. Hexed all on the straight A's. Has third eye as a defenseman. Kristanovic, straight A's. Elite edges in reverse. Quick pick, no contest. Jesus. Six foot five, two way forward. What a bit. That's basically Mark Stone. And Rasmus Rene as born leader. Rubrik will have born leader too, because I didn't know what to give those guys. And then there's other computer generated players a little bit later on. So I'm going to give it one more shot. I'm going to give it one more shot because I'd like to get this pick. I mean, left wing wise, it's already. Oh, it's already busy. But my thought is, can we trade for the second overall pick and then trade down? And get a little bit back. Or Dvorsky Perot. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off. What about the two seconds? Can we pull this off? Get Silverberg back in the deal. <sighs> Just given who's at the top of that draft board, though. I don't know if it's worth it. We already have Hardigan. We already have German. I'd probably want a defender. Instead of the two seconds. Yeah, we got 30 seconds left here. It would take that first round pick. I don't think we're going to be able to pull it off. Yeah, Detroit makes their pick. They do take Gavin McKenna. It's Colorado at 10. That might want to make... A deal next. And again, that is where this left defender Carpenter is. I highly doubt he has Schnipe as a defender, but if he does, that would be amazing. There's Boupre, who we know is three years out. Howard McCaltz, not very good. Nick Nickel, also not very good. Josh Madano, son of a legend. Born leader. Uh, Gene Glennie. One year out, unconfirmed shock and awe. There's Jay Collins. Eh. Jody Griffin. Eh. Rick Nash comparison. I love seeing players with a Rick Nash comparison, but also I don't because it makes me feel sad and old. Uh, there's Joe Little. Joe Thornton comparison. 
Unconfirmed abilities. Uh, Dennis Lavin. Lavin. Cody Boos. Three years out, Weber comparison. I don't know what the hell our scouts were doing this year, but uh, they didn't do a very good job. I am not overly confident in this draft at all. What the hell were our scouts doing? Ooh, Alan Garvin. Okay. Okay. That dude's projected around 36th. Good to know. Andy Agon of EFCO. Not looking that great. Uh, Jackers. Jordan Ackers. Not looking that great. I, this is a weird draft. Sebastian for a shot to Joe Danger. I like my men with a bit of danger. Derek Weeks. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at this guy. Whoo. The Robert Lewandowski of hockey. Derek Weeks. That is the guy. That is 100% the guy. Is there anybody else in the mix? Wheeler, a bunch of unconfirmed abilities. Jean Lebeau. All right, I think. Hello! High elite goaltender Valeri Filatov. Interesting. As Hextall, the defender I was interested in. The start of Raw. Caden! Thank you for the 16 months. Things are going pretty well. Thank you for asking. Or thank you for... Yeah, I mean, yeah, asking, kind of. Thank you. Appreciate you. Hextall would have been nice. What could go wrong taking a Philatov early in the draft? Well, the good thing is I'm not Columbus. So I got that going for me. Let's go all the way back down. There is Philatov. Okay. We're almost around three. Sweet. So the players that we're super interested in, First round, there's Gene Glennie, who is one year out. There's Alec Carpenter, who is one year out. There's Little, who likely does have abilities. But man, he could also be like a low six. Probably not, but he's a bit of a risk. There was Alan Garvin, who looked great. Derek Weeks looked great. So we could trade up for like Little and Glenny. Carpenter, though, projected as the 10th pick. I think we... We're going to probably wheel and deal pretty heavily here. I think we are. So that 10th pick from Colorado. We're going to try to make a lot of moves here. Hello, Mr. For the Win. How are you tonight? Uh, if we were to use Gabriel Perot, who was your prospect before Colorado... I'm a streamer now, too. Are you, though? One day stream. Oh, did you stream today? You didn't tell me. Sin for the Win Productions, CYN, FTW Productions on YouTube. Watch the franchises. Watch the road to the shows. And now watch him stream after I pestered him and badgered him for a very long time. Shout out to that 16-bit guy. Welcome. Thank you for the primer. Appreciate you. Welcome in. I'm going to celebrate it by not trading for this pick. It dropped 45 minutes through. Instead of the next two hours, who knows? Ah, well, hi. The joys of streaming when it just randomly disconnects for no reason. <sighs> Again, with Carpenter, we can get Philatov in weeks. There's Garvin. But again, we have Little, Glenny, and Carpenter. Joe Little... Unconfirmed four years out. I really, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. There's so many of those players that I'd want. Philadelphia at four. Take Kristanovic. Let me see what we can do here. Let me see what we can do. Goaltending wise, we're still up, we're still set up really well. Defensively, we do need to shop the rights of Cam Fowler. And we can pick up the rights to Riley Smith. Sure. I'll see if I can flip him instead. Can we get anything for Brett Kulak signing rights? We cannot. Josh Manson's. No. 
Even Dell's Asters? No. All right, so that's about all we can do there. Uh, right wing side, nothing to do. Left wing side, shop Brad Marshan's rights. Nobody wants him. Kempe, Connor Sherry. We'll take Josh Bailey's rights because at the very least, we are technically dropping our salary uh, on the team right now with these moves. So, does Aster and they call me to be seat. With respect to one Johnny Superb, man, he did not invent Michael Dell's Aster. <laughs> All right, yeah, we can't uh, do anything else for those other trades. He did not coin that term. All right. There's not much we can do there. What about the Kopitar signing rights? No. Okay. Well, we at least dropped the current cap hit. If I want to get every player, I think I have to pass up on that 10th pick. I think I do. Thoughts on 2BC? Seems like a good enough guy. Never really had conversation with him. Used to watch his stuff like <laughs> almost 10 years ago. But yeah. I I give him credit for still just being on an island, doing his own thing, and still being very successful at it. Especially the longevity that he, he has at this point. Very respectable. 20, 42, and 45. Oh, we got to get this right, but we can't get everybody. We'll say, let's not go after Carpenter. Just because of the value. I do want to end up with Glenny. We'll take the risk of not going after Little. So we want the 15th pick. We want the 15th pick. And to be honest, I mean, maybe the AI go early. But let's talk to number 15, Columbus. And again, we have all of these extra centers. And I will use... Is it necessarily worth it to use more, given that he has abilities? I, I don't know the approach I want to take. I don't know the approach that I want to take. As Rene goes off the board. This is a tough one, man. I, I haven't struggled like this to make a decision for a draft in a long time. Trade up to get Glenny. And then still try to get those three second round picks. I think that's the approach. My only hang up is like I have these centers to trade, but my all, my thought process is also why am I trading these picks necessarily, you know? What is the point? Oh, let's use Lashik in this. Quite far off. That's not surprising. Um, T.S. Hovlid. will throw you into this deal. There it goes. All right. So we do move up. We take Columbus's pick at number 15. So Madano is on his way to Montreal. And Carpenter who we were looking at at 10, actually fell to Boston at 13th. Medium 4, 76 overall, had silver magnetic and 1T as a defenseman. So we did identify the Carpenter was probably great. Oh my God. We couldn't trade up to 9, though. The value just wasn't there. They didn't want to trade the picks. Shit. Okay. Well, we know that guy was good. Hopefully, Gene Glennie is just as good. Let's go for the left wing, Gene Glennie. Okay, he's a 73. He's a little bit worse than Carpenter. And only has one ability, and it's tricky. Oh, my God. Okay, as a grinder, by the way. <laughs> Trevor Zegers, if he hit. All right. Well, probably would have been worth getting Carpenter at 10. But it's not like it's a disaster of a pick. Next target, number 36, Alan Garvin. We want Detroit's pick again. And this one, I imagine, we will land 
Because we do have second round picks. Did we just draft Freddie Gauthier? We might have. And they see the value for Glennie worse than Keeskinen. The problem is I am going to have players that I have to move out sooner rather than later, too. Which is a shame. Perot is already one of them. Misa, Celebrini, Geeky. Yeah, Perot can be used here because he has to be moved out anyway. Uh, that might go through as a one-for-one. One. I'm going to pick up the Coyotes fourth. No, I'm not. Will it go through one-for-one? One? Not quite. I'll add the Arizona sixth. There we go. All right, so we move up a little bit to the beginning of the second round. As the game glitches, because again, I don't accept trade offers. And we will be going for this defender here, Alan Garvin, who never should have fallen this low. A player after Sin's heart with a Mark Edward Vlasic comparison. Alan Garvin is the pick, and yeah, he's not bad. No abilities. No abilities, but good value. 17 as well. Younger prospect. Very, very good. Very, very good. Still think overall we should have started off this draft by getting Carpenter rather than Glennie. All things considered, though, not bad. Okay, so Little. We didn't have the information confirmed on this guy either. Medium elites. Joe Little, but he is only a 62. I don't think we did bad in the first round. We could have done better. Second round, we start off with Garvin, which is great. Didn't really have to give up too much to get him. Our next target is Weeks, around pick number 44. So obviously 34, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, we'll go with that Carolina pick to play it safe. We'll go with that Carolina pick at 41 to play it safe. Actually, we have the 42nd pick. I didn't even notice. Hmm. We should be fine at 42, right? We should be fine at 42. Famous last words. Oh, thank God. All right. Let's go for Derek Weeks, the low elite. This guy looks insane. Absolutely insane. NHL ready. My God. This guy looks amazing. And he is. 77 overall. My God. What a player. What a player. He is like the perfect two-way forward. Again, he is he is Polish Mark Stone. Good plur. <laughs> He's a damn good plur. Say hello to Derek Weeks. That is tremendous. And our other big target in this round, around pick number 58, is Valeri Filatov. So, two, three, well, actually, 43, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Taste the biscuit. Yeah, let's go with that Vegas pick. Glove save. Thank you, my friend, for the tier one. Appreciate you. How the heck are you? So, yeah, we will trade down 13 spots. And let's pick up. Let's go with the third. Honestly, I wouldn't mind picking up the rest of their draft picks if they're up for it. Okay, what if we take out the seventh? What if we take out the fifth? All right, yeah, that third round pick's a bit of a stretch. Uh, what about the fifth and the seventh? I'd be good with that. What about just the fifth? There we go. All right, so we pick up a fifth round pick to drop down 13 spots to make the most of the value here, which can make more streams, but working a decent amount of nights. Hey, this... Uh, Wow, that actually worked out perfectly. <laughs> I almost blew it on the math. Um, streaming hours aren't going to line up with everyone's schedule, man. I know it. I know it. We get Filatov in goal. He is 19 and only a 56 overall, but he is a high elite, so he was worth the risk. And all in all, that is a pretty good set of picks at the top of this draft. The question now, oh my god. Okay, so he's a trash bag, but he is going to be a medium elite. There's Ilya Ivanov. Five years out at 19, probably a medium elite. You get Jaden Skewen, who might be half decent. 
These other one out of four medium elites are too big of a risk. Do we have any other low elites? Oh my god, do we? German defender Bjorn Schultz. Might be a trash bag, but not bad. And then these two out of fours also might be worth the risk. They're not the top priority. Two out of fours for medium top six, not great. For the defense, not great. Okay. Sport Master, what's up? Our next target. We are looking at... Uh, pick in the 70s, I would say. Schultz doesn't have to be taken until later. There's Tamarinus, Cambeats. We just can't guarantee it. Even off skewing. I mean, Hulse at 86 is the next one to really go for. We have pick 106. Right. Let's sim the start of the next round. And we can go. Let's pick number 86, right? Let's play it safe on the math here. Uh, Goon, I mean, Matthews and Mar I mean, the team's drastically different at this point. Matthews and Marner were the first to go. But, yeah, this team is drastically different at this point. Let's talk to Florida. With the 80th pick. And see if we have what it takes to trade up. Do we have what it takes to trade up here? Dalibor Dvorsky, again, just really isn't going to have a spot on this team. So we can use him. And we can get, honestly, let's just safety net it with draft picks and see how much we can get out of this. How much can we get out of it? A third, a fourth, and a fifth. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. All right. So Ivanov is there. Another goalie. Wouldn't be too bad. We don't necessarily have the value to trade up again because we've already done it quite a few times. So we're going to play it safe and take left wing Rainier Hoos. There we go. 55 overall, medium elite at 19. Again, a bit of a long shot, but given it was a third round pick, the value on that's insane. The value on that's insane. So even off, I don't think we'll trade up for again. Next target is Schultz. We need pick 138. I think we're good. We are. So let's just go ahead and sim up to that point. I do want to see if I missed out on him out on anybody. I don't think we did for the most part. I mean, it's a draft in NHL, you know, compared to and then yeah, Ivanov, Ivanov, Ivanov was he was okay. I'd rather have Hulse. Um, it's a draft in NHL where we're not limiting our ability to trade. We're bound to have a damn good draft. This is uh, the easiest draft to. To manage and manipulate in like any franchise mode ever. Um, when's our next pick after this? Because that's 138. 112. Is there anybody else that was worth it? There's Ian Malone as a starter. What else do we have pinned here? Well, if we're taking Schultz next, we could go for Plekin off as well. Fuck, we talked about it at the start of the stream. It's uh, It's a bad thing. Let's go for Bjorn Schultz now, and then we'll just start best guessing on some... Well, there's that medium elite starter. Let's take that goalie. Let's take that goalie. Let's do it. Ian Malone, come on down. Okay, well... Honestly, it's not that upsetting, given that all the other guys outside of Schultz are just best guess anyway. Schultz, 51 overall, low elite, no abilities at 18, so another low elite that will hope develops out of nowhere. Holy hell, we have a lot of fourth round picks. When the hell did that happen? Uh, let's go for Maxim Plekhanov. Trash. Pick number 135 in round number five. Let's go for Mason Tanaka. Not bad. Maybe stop pick hoarding. Never. 48 overall low elite at 18 years old. Another long shot to make it, but 
I love those players filling up the lines for the Marlies. Uh, we will go for Emmanuel Labrie. Another low elite. All right, those two out of four is working out pretty well. Getting all the low elites with extremely low overalls. Oh, my God. Spurs won the lottery, didn't they just have a 20-year run of excellence? I mean, they haven't been amazing the past few years, but yes. You know. All right, yeah, Beagle's not that good. And that was our final pick of the draft. Not bad. Whoops. Sorry, Detroit. We've already done business in this draft. No other business is necessary. Do I think we made the best choices across the board? No. We could have done a little bit better, but that is obviously obviously still a, a top-notch draft. Which, again, it is very easy to have top-notch drafts in this game. We got a little bit lucky with some of the two out of fours. So looking ahead. Looking ahead. Goalie-wise, Joseph Wall. Are you coming back? Depends on whether or not we think Scott Rotzloff will be good enough as a backup. Because if he is, then we sign Filatov to get some AHL time. He would be the backup behind Harenstam, though. We'll bring Joe Wall back. One more year, Mr. Wall. Let's bring you back. I'm going to drop Endo again and probably bring him back later. That means we can leave Filatov unsigned for now, which is okay. Maybe I regret that decision. Maybe I do. We could still change our minds later. Uh, defensively, Kulak, he's gone. Josh Manson, he's gone. Michael Delzato, he's gone. Topi Niemela. Mac Hollowell. We do have to sign Sam Dickinson. Garvin makes a lot of sense to sign and at least play with the Marlies. Yerki Yokipaka, he can go. Betri Houtonen is there, and so is Bjorn Schultz. We're going to sign Houtonen. We're going to sign Schultz. Does it make sense to keep Hollowell and Niemela? I'm going to say yes, just to fill out the team at the very least. So keep those guys around. Uh, right wing side, Josh Bailey never played for us. He's gone. Weeks, definitely, definitely getting signed. Sarah Noel, definitely coming back. He was awesome. Plekhanov sucks. Uh, Brad Marchand, you're gone. You were terrible for us. Hirvonen's coming back. Riley Smith never played for us. Steve's. Hmm. I'm just trying to walk. We'll keep Steve's around. Rexington, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Let's sign Gene Glenny for the Marlies. I swear to God, I read Beagle as Bagel. Uh, Rainier Hulse. Let's keep him around. Not going to worry about these guys. I mean, Glenn, eh, junior player. Uh, Emmanuel Labrie, we cannot sign yet. Tanaka, we cannot sign yet. They are both in junior. That you did send. Your biggest claim to fame. Kopitar is out. Pillar or Pillar will sign. We'll keep Kressel around. Okay. I think we're pretty much good to go. Joe Wall came back. Hollowell. Hulse, Dickinson, Houghton, and Glennie, Garvin, Weeks, Schultz, all signed with the team. So again, we got a couple of RFAs. I mean, Bagel, there's no name changes in this game. Compared to Madden, NBA, MLB, uh, this game has a fun issue. All right, and right wing side, it's just Sir Ron Noel. Sir Ron. Noel. All right, so we're at 40 contracts already. $58 million in cap space. The damage we are going to be able to do in free agency could be immense. It could be. Uh, let's actually go negotiate with those RFAs because I'd like to know our full money situation. So, Ronnie Hirvinen, you were fantastic this year. I will give you 1.1 on a two-year deal. 
Uh, of course, your sentiment this season was pillar. I will give you 1.1. And the right wing on that line was Mr. Noel. Who we can have one year left as RFA status. I'd love to keep him. Topi Niemela. We can go two years for you. Bring up to age 26. Alex Steves. Sign you on a one-year deal. And then Kressler. Uh, wow, we still have a lot of contract control for Kressler. Not bad. Not bad. And every single person signed. You love to see it. So 39 contracts, $58.4 million in cap space. We know we're still going to have to make other moves, but the question, who's out there on the open market? Who's out there? Who's it going to be? Oh, there's a lot of RFAs. Who are the UFAs? Maybe the year we do something, maybe not. 